Hi, welcome to Zero Fox Given. I'm your host, Krista DeLuca. With me today is Carson Block, founder of Muddy Waters Capital, and his business partner, Freddie Brick. How are you guys doing today? We're doing well, but yeah. why is it that you're still not saying hostess? Okay, should we do it again? No. <laughs> And again. Um, no, yeah. don't. No, seriously. No. I'm the hostess with the mostess. Yeah. And since anyway, we established we're doing well. What are what are we doing? What's, um, what's, on the, uh, what's on this board over here? Yeah. What do we want to start with? There's a lot. I mean, it's been. Well, there's an order. Okay. So what, what does it say? What's <laughs> number can't. one? Can Krista, what's the most one? important event going on Soccer. on the planet right now? The World Cup. Yes. And where do is... you honestly believe that that's the, the most important event in the world? That's what you told me to believe. What? Who told you to believe? Freddie Brick, the okay. British guy. Right. Okay. It's the most important international event going on in the Middle East. It's much more important than that stupid climate crisis conference, Ooh. which no oh. one cared about, had a terrible name. Let's move past that quickly. Um, Why is it the most important? Well, hang on. I, I want to draw a parallel. Okay. So, so we were in the same place last week for the U.S.-England game. Mm -hmm. And I... I know fuck all about soccer. Like, I don't care. And I never been on sports. I never been on sports. And I walked in there serious as fuck saying, all right, this game will end 0-0. Who wants to take the other side of it? And unfortunately, nobody did. I mean, everybody's like, oh, no, what do you know about? But everybody secretly knew. <laughs> That's spot on. Like, these games all end 0-0. And it really, I think you shouldn't... If you think that the World Cup is important and matters in any way, mm -hmm. you cannot dismiss COP twenty seven because that everything in the World Cup as well. Uh, everything in World Cup is zero zero, and COP is fucking going to do nothing as well. <laughs> so, like, they are the same goddamn thing, almost in the same country. Okay, there are some differences. Okay. COP twenty seven. I'm pretty sure I had alcohol and hookers. Right. Hot World women. Cup. Yeah. No hookers, no alcohol, okay? Now- No alcohol? So this is one of the awesome things. Um, yeah, this was so good. I so love it. This is great. The World Cup was awarded to Qatar because Qatar were prepared to bribe the most. Um, Russia won it last time because- They bribed. They were prepared to bribe And the before most. that, Brazil. Yeah. No, no, Brazil, that, 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 that's, that's, that's actually that was, what uh, Seth Blatter went down for- um, and some of the other FIFA guys was getting bribed by Brazil. So remember, they all oh, got like the watches, um, the watch, the Parmigiani watches, and and after this all blew up, FIFA demanded return of the Parmigiani watches. Only half of the committee like gave them back. I mean, there was even a Jordanian prince who said, "Fuck you, I'm keeping my Parmigiani." <laughs> <laughs> Is this that. true? Yeah, yeah. I, love I love that cheap piece of shit. Like that's so awesome. It's awesome. So, um, so they award the World Cup to Qatar. France, coincidentally, get like a whole bunch of business. They're like, oh, we'll buy PSG. And then they're like, oh, we'll do some other stuff. And like, oh, uh, you know, Airbus need like a bunch of new planes. We'll buy some of those and we'll just leave them in the desert. Everything's fine. So there are a number of issues. Like firstly, Qatar happens to be in the middle of a desert, which is not the most conducive environment for running around playing football in. So um, they have it's to good, move. It's good Buskashi climate though. <laughs> good. And uh, camel racing also. Yes. So they had to move the World Cup to the middle of the um, of the European soccer season. Um, then in addition, Qatar has a not enviable uh, record on human rights. And it's not even like enviable compared to countries that have human rights. It's actually, I think, pretty bad compared to other countries that don't have human rights. Like it's one of the few places that makes China look like paradise on earth. Right, yeah, oh. like it has a real <laughs> as constitution. A, as a dissident or, um, or, a, or a homosexual. So there was this whole uproar as to like, well, what's gonna happen with booze and are they gonna allow gay people? So they've been very proactive on not allowing gay people because um, they're such a tolerant, wonderful um, place. On booze, they actually did this awesome rug pull so they were like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna allow booze. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be great. And apparently what happened was um, they had some like pretty high members of the royal family kind of touring the stadium prior, like a week well, prior. Well, don't forget Budweiser paid $75 million or euro yeah. for the sponsorship rights and to put their Budweiser stands like right. everywhere. 
So apparently what happened was like about a week before, um, like one of the members of the royal family is kind of touring around. They're like, yeah, and like, you know, these are what the stands are going to look, look like. And they're like, eh, fuck that. Like, we're not really sure we want this. So you've had all these people who have paid a fortune for tickets, who've paid a fortune for flights, who paid a lot of money for this shitty, like little shack kind of accommodation, albeit palatial compared to the hundreds of thousands of migrant workers who could only dream for such a place. And then you've got these like awesome English football hooligans who have turned up and they cannot believe how much fucking money they have paid to sit around sober that's watching uninspiring football. Wow. It's one of the saddest in things ever. In fucking Qatar. <laughs> Qatar. Like, if there's a place where you need to be <laughs> fucked up from, like, it's dusk Qatar? till dawn, yeah. it's that fucking place. Mm. Or dawn till dawn. Shit, dawn to dawn, man. I mean, I, I can't imagine there's anything <laughs> redeeming about that place outside yeah. of the airport. So it's been amazing. They've spent, like, about $200 billion across building stadiums and infrastructure. It's supposed to be showcase in Qatar and it's just been a complete shit show from the off whether it's um footballers that wanted to wear these like one love armbands um the German team who spent all this time thinking about um what they were going to do to protest Qatar they they had the team photo taken with their hand over their mouth like I can't speak right. and then proceeded to lose to Japan and everyone was like guys if you'd have spent more time training and Less time, time working out the protests, like maybe you'd have not sucked. Um, there was a really prominent FIFA executive, I think his name's Infantini, who um, gave this speech like two days before being like, I myself and I'm an immigrant to uh, Switzerland so I can identify with the indentured servants who died building these things. And everyone's like, oh, what the fuck? Um, it, I think he was trying to echo that whole, um, you know, I wasn't a Protestant, therefore I didn't speak up for the Protestants and there was no one left to speak up for me. And it just kind of landed on, on deaf ears a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, what a shock. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's been awesome just showcasing what a revolting organization FIFA is. Um, well, and, and Qatar, I mean, yeah. these guys are made for each other. That's you true. Know? It's, it's, That's you know. true. Although most of Europe will be buying its gas from Qatar for the foreseeable future. So, um, yeah. Well, actually, along those lines, actually, uh, London, City of London, I guess, canceled the Qataris advertising contract, the um, London uh, subway oh. and bus shelters. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so that, like, really pissed the Qataris off. They call that <laughs> hypocrisy. That's awesome. So we won't be winning the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you yeah. got to score a goal, right? Yeah, that's true. So I don't who, know that anybody's going to score a goal. Well, well, out of curiosity, who are you rooting for? Are you going to be rooting for Italy or the U.S.? That's a good question. I mean, I guess the U.S. Okay, that's good. Italy on in the World Cup, so well, that also that's helps. That's not nice. Huh. Yeah, they didn't that's, get him. I thought they were like the Rocky Balboa of uh, uh, soccer too, teams. They're too busy like squabbling amongst each other to get it together. Hanging with some pretty hot women, I'm sure. Yeah. That sounds hot. Do you know what it was? I reckon they probably looked at it. They were like, oh, where's it going to be? They're like Qatar. Like, yeah. so, uh. so you're getting a mid-season break and it's going to be in Qatar? Nah. Yeah. Let's take a little break. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, that's the World Cup. And cop. 27? Mm. Top 27. Well, the funny thing is, I that implies there were 26 beforehand. I mean, like, yeah, I wonder what the did you convention. know? What First of all, what does COP stand for? Um, countries obviously pissed off. So it's all of the countries are going to be underwater when we have global warming. They all turn up and then like all the world's industrial powers are like, shit, these guys are here again, banging the drum about global warming. And they're like, we like our houses heated. We like leaving lights on. Sometimes I leave the tap running when I brush my teeth. Like, you know, all the good shit Sometimes. that we do. Oh, always. Is that I, a big deal? Dude, apparently <laughs> that's a big deal. Like so, when, when I was at school, they were always like, oh, you know how much water you can save if you just turn the tap off when- So, so, this, so check this out, ever since it cooled off here, mm -hmm. I don't know, there's some issue with the recirculation pump. The, the house is a little over a year old. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, yeah, 
turn the water on and you get hot water in the shower for maybe 90 seconds, two minutes, then it goes kind of cold for a few minutes and then you get the hot water again. So what's the solution? I mean, anybody want to guess? I mean, just run a ball. No, but same thing, right? You get a cold water. How yeah, do you, but, how do you but just get it really hot for Listen, 90 seconds and then top it up with like 15 seconds of cold water. What and then kind of bathtub? I mean, well, you can fit in some small bathtubs, <laughs> I guess, but I was going to ask what kind of bathtub you get yeah, water in. You just got into. like sponge bath. Okay. The solution, yes. all right, like maybe you guys aren't that mechanically inclined and so you don't understand this, but you wake up, you turn the water on, maximum heat, and walk away for about five, 10 minutes, and then come back and take your shower. So it goes hot then it pushes through all the cold and it gets and back then you to get hot. your hot water that's right that's the solution uh, and you're you're, sitting, have you gotten your water bill i mean it's gonna be hot i don't know no, i'm telling uh, you my wife pays the water bill yeah yeah it's my, gonna be high my, it comes out of your bonus that's i don't nice. care well, wow anywho yeah so anyway that's uh so cop 27 that accomplished a lot more than the, the previous 26. No, but there was a pledge. Like, we're going to, you know, yeah. give developing nations, blah, blah. I mean, I guess if that were actually funded, which it's not going to be funded. I mean, right. of course, like, that's the really funny part. It's, you know, it's like everybody pats themselves on the back. Oh, great. We got this promise out of the developed countries <laughs> to, you know, give us like $100 billion or whatever it is. But it's just like... Look, thank fuck that's not going to be funded. I mean, because you would have globally about 100 people in total pocket that money. I mean, come on. Let's, <laughs> so let's call a spade a spade it's here, so right? Like, oh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to give your country $5 billion to deal with climate change. Whoa, you know, wonderful. I'll, I'll put like a solar cell on top of my fuck you villa. <laughs> Like, put solar panels on top of the new jet I'm going to have when I'm finished stealing, no, no, no. like, 20% of GDP. On the bottom. Oh, like yeah, you on said, the bottom. Underneath the jet, the our new climate-aware corporate travel program. Solar cells on the bottom of the jet. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Right. So, moving on from uh, solving the world's problems to... Uh, no, well, she, she's supposed to read it. Go ahead. She I, can't, have I know. I week. asked him to help me out. Yeah, I mean, I, you, ser you said you were going to take reading lessons over the past few weeks. You didn't take reading She's lessons? She's been pocketing the money, dude. It's like the cop 27 <laughs> things. Like, yeah, yeah, I promise. I promise. And then you just pocket I got the money. hooked on phonics. But I, am I going to have like... to pay the tutor directly? <laughs> they said they were fine with, yeah, direct payment. Okay, well, <laughs> we, we got to make sure you get these reading lessons. Anyway. All right. Go ahead. Um, I can read some of it. VCs have... Excellent. Could you read VC? That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, read the bits you want on that and then I'll fill in. No, it's some of, the, some of it's legible. FTX okay. and how stupid lazy VCs are, of course. Yeah. Okay. Talk to me about that. That VCs, was one of yours. I, I got to say, like, for no other reason than this for loss of Why do you have such weeks. a hatred with them, though? Because like, it's since, such a better business model. Yeah. It's, it's such a better model. It's, um, it's deeply rooted in both jealousy... Mm -hmm. but also rooted in just a feeling of, I, I wouldn't say it's like disgust. I, I think it's like deep intellectual dishonesty. Like for example, Josh Wolf, who I really respect as a VC, has told like many audiences many times like, hey, this is just macro, okay? Like there's this enormous tailwind that has been exceptionally helpful for our business. And I really respect that because there's no cognitive dissonance is like, oh, I'm just like the smartest human yeah. being on the fucking planet. What kills me and drives my hatred of the rest of the industry is this belief that they are just a hundred times smarter than everyone else. And that has morphed into, well, not only are we a hundred times smarter, but we have to spend like 90% of our day because we actually don't do any fucking work thinking of these weird things that we should be into to kind of like keep on niche smartness. Like that is just drives me insane. Like, you know, you'll you'll be like at a, you know, at a, um, a restaurant ordering a latte and you're like, oh, you're not having a blood shake? 
Oh, no, I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm having a blood shake. Oh, let me tell you about this like niche paper that I didn't fucking read that actually like someone who's already a billionaire read and I was just like sat there admiring his jock strap so much. And like he drinks blood shakes. So, oh yeah, I've been drinking blood shakes for the last three weeks. I mean, I, I feel awful, but you know, I've raised about $200 million because everyone else is now drinking the blood shakes. So that's the thing that kills me. It's the intellectual dishonesty coupled with the just like outright lack of a fucking like clue how to do DD on anything whatsoever. Well, was it really intellectually dishonest when Sequoia expressed their, I guess, admiration for lack of a better word as to how Bankman Freed during a due diligence call was playing video games? <laughs> I mean, was that intellectually dishonest or were they like, dude, that's baller? I mean, because they have to sit there yeah. and have potential LPs and existing LPs show up and do their thing. And Ridiculous. they probably can't play video games then. I mean, not overtly, like maybe mm. in their minds they are, but, you know. That... How much more money would we raise if connected up to the uh, like video conferencing system that doesn't work? We just had a PlayStation. Would people be like, oh, these guys are fucking big time? Well, listen. I got to tell you, in all honesty, not much, because I would, whatever the game is, I would die within the first like three seconds every <laughs> fucking time. So they're not going to look at me playing right, PlayStation and be like, well, this is a genius here, obviously. It'd be the same question that we ask ourselves on uh, the AI that we use for covering decisions. How do we know it's turned on? <laughs> all right. Yeah, that was my favorite. Yeah. First due diligence call with somebody talking to us about the fund that uses the AI and, you know, they asked a bunch of questions about it. And every time I would ask like the guys who coded it questions like, oh, well, we don't know, you know, because it's machine learning. So at the end of this DD call, um, they asked me, well, Freddie was on the call too. They said, is there anything we didn't ask that we should have? You know, and there was one thing that popped to my mind, but I did not fucking say it. And oh, that's that was, a first. And that was, how do you know it's turned on? <laughs> it's a valid question. It's it turned is. on, I think. I think, yeah. I can log in. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, like something happens. So, so the FDX stuff has been multifaceted. We've had VCs who, well, I, I think there's two parts about VCs. They clearly did no DD, but then they've all said like, we fucked up, but don't worry, we did tons of DD. Now, Tiger obviously outsourced all that DD to Bain, so I'd love to be a fly on the wall for that conversation. Look, they, they just haven't written the article yet on to whom Bain outsourced the DD. <laughs> all right, so like, you know, you can go- The metaverse. Ah, <laughs> uh, the metaverse. Um, but it does raise a good question, like, there's this concept of DD, and I actually think DD means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Well, there's deep dicking, <laughs> but... What's that? <laughs> oh, you you know. Because I think what's really happened in VC is most of VC used to be really early stage stuff. And you're just kind of having some entrepreneur come in, pitch an idea, you're like, yeah, it sounds kind of cool, here's some money. And it was like a couple million dollars. So the amount of work you're gonna do versus a couple million dollar check for something that's written on a napkin genuinely is not that great. It's a very different business when you're doing a round at a $32 billion valuation and writing a $250 million check. Like what we perceive as the amount of work you would need to do on that is far different. And I think for the VCs, it's probably the exact same thing. Like, yeah, a guy came in, he played some video games, whatever. Well. I actually am kinder to the VCs in the FTX situation than than you, you okay. are at this point. I mean, the one the one VC that does deserve to be held in complete contempt for this is Sequoia because those absolutely ridiculous open love letters they wrote to that guy. Mm. Like, oh, it's so wonderful. He's playing video games when we're trying to get information. And, oh, I turned to my colleague and asked... Do you think Sam Bankman Freed could be the world's first trillionaire? She paused, looked thoughtfully, fondled her breast, and said, <laughs> Yes, I do. I do think it will be Sam Bankman Freed. 
I am. So, I mean, like that. <laughs> so they Sequoia deserves special ridicule、mm-hmm. and contempt. But putting them to the side, what we know, and this is serious point about VC, it's usually people coming in without highly complex business to slide deck, and they're looking at the founder and wondering, can this guy sell at the next round at a higher valuation? Now, FTX was a highly complex business. There's money flying all around, and there are lots and lots of entities. Literally, the VC firms don't have the due diligence capability. They don't look. That's like that's like trying to diligence a you know a global bank. Not you know not the scale of、yeah. J.P. Morgan, but a smaller bank that has global operations. Like how the fuck are they expected to do that? Now, and that's kind of like actually too kind. Pretty, Too kind. Well, Two questions. Well, hang on. Can we get a seat on the board? No. Why not? We don't have one. That's a little <laughs> bit of a flag. Question number two. <laughs> Just a little. Can we、bit. see your balance sheet? Sure, I'll send you a spreadsheet. Cool. What's line item for funky customer deposit thing that's hidden? Oh, and the rest of these things are shit coins. Come on, man. Two、oh. questions. Okay. That's valid, but but so we just shorted a、uh, D local,、mm-hmm. so that's publicly traded payment processor. And one of the things we didn't talk about in the report, but I almost did, and it's a valid point. There's another payment processor called Adyen that we think is actually not a fraud, unlike D local, which is.、Um, so Adyen, based in Amsterdam, they actually they process more payments than D local do, does. So Adyen had a restatement about a year ago,、mm-hmm. and this was probably a restatement. It was probably a good faith mistake、mm-hmm. because actually before the restatement, it hit their profits. I think what happened was they double counted some payables. So Adyen is their auditor after doing two or three. This was the second or third audit that they had done. Apparently caught that there was this double counting, and that brings up the point that. Even when you're not trying to commit fraud, these when you have these far-flung businesses with money just flying through all the time, it's highly complex. I mean, it's really difficult, even if you're trying to keep track of things, to do so. And for the auditor, again, they weren't. You know, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe they were somewhat under-resourced there, but.、Um, But yeah, it, mis- mistakes can happen. Just even when your job is to go in and try to provide some sort of reasonable assurance that the financial statements are accurate. So okay, maybe the VCs could have done more, but could they have figured that shit out? No. At the end of the day, really, the questions to ask are: What were they doing in crypto? And the answer is: Crypto is this mass delusion that. It was profitable for a number of years for many people to suffer from, and you know, I mean, my my whole thing, tongue in cheek, when I when I get asked about crypto now, is I say, look, they there had to be something new, some new asset class created in order to get the massive retail bubble that you got in tech stocks during the 1990s and in housing during the early noughts. You had to create some new asset because. Or type of asset because, look, during the '90s, you know, as these things were inflating and people like me are like, yeah, this is bullshit. You know, no, this time it's different. You know, the this is a new world online, but it wasn't different, right? So people learned that lesson. Then housing starts to rip. Like I'm telling my father to sell his house one year after he bought it in like 2002. I'm like, no, there's no way that this is. <laughs> you know, so I'm a little early on the bubbles, like you know, but.、Um, <laughs> But you know, everybody's like, "Oh no, no, no! We've never seen a nationwide housing decline. You know, this is different. Housing's different. It was not. So retail. <laughs> I'm just gonna say retail wouldn't be so stupid, but retail would not have gone into an existing asset class that's accessible to it.、Um, you know, in this way. So there had to be something new created so that you could say like, oh. Not only you know it's different this time because the asset is different, and all these assholes over here, like these prick short sellers, they just don't get it. You know, okay, boomer, that sort of thing. So anyway, that to me is the is the real question: is 
why they, they shouldn't get a pass on going into crypto. I mean, that was just the FOMO thing. Um, that to me is where you can hang them out to dry. Yeah, I, I think if a regulator goes really deep and does some real work here, they're going to end up finding out that a lot of these VCs were pretty openly committing massive amounts of securities fraud. Um, you know, I think part of the scam with crypto and what made it so interesting, and, and a bunch of these VCs actually like have this on their website, it's like invest in the company, mm-hmm. do an ICO of some sort of shit coin, spit the coin out, and uh, you know we get to take our money off the table, lock the rest of the coins up, and it's basically a free option on do any of these 26 year olds come up with something smart in 10 years time and it's pretty attractive IRR. Um, the other thing about this whole FTX debacle that interests me greatly is, uh, is Caroline. Um, uh, 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 <laughs> I, I mean, you look at Bankman Freed, her, like these people are born, they're born to be incels. It's creepy. When people born to be incels actually fuck. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing that this dimension did not implode. It's it's super creepy. And that's where, for me, in the pantheon of great fraud scumbags, that's where Joe Lowe really eclipse mm. Bank and Free because, you know, he's getting uh, Miranda Kerr, Evan Spiegel's wife. Uh, he's like, hey, I want to bang you. Here's a necklace. Sam Bank and Free, it's like, uh, Caroline, I want to bang you. Here's a beanbag. Like, it's it's just crazy. It's- <laughs> no, but here's my favorite part about Evan Spiegel, Miranda Kerr, Joe Lowe. Remember, before Evan Spiegel and Miranda Kerr got married, no, no premarital sex. They yeah. don't believe in it. And then it came Wait, out what? that... what? Right, yeah. But then it came out that <laughs> Joe Lowe, you pull up a picture of this mm. dude, J-H-O-L-O-W, a pretty horrible looking guy. I mean, okay, he's not as bad looking as Sam Bankman Freed, but pretty horrible looking guy. Joe Lowe was tagging the shit out of Miranda Kerr. There was no, yeah. like, oh, no premarital sex here. I think the issue was that Snap had not yet IPO'd. Yeah. And so he wasn't actually liquid for billions yet, whereas Joe Lowe, that dude was. So at the end of the day, I think that's good for the. Good Miranda. Yeah, good, you know, good for no, her. No, I think she had to give back some of the stuff. Um, I think she had to give back, um, like, the necklace and some of the stuff that yeah, he gave her. I think she wants to forget the whole episode. That would be, uh, that would be my that, assumption. Aren't, didn't she get divorced from Evan Spiegel, or aren't they getting divorced? I think She's way, well, where's Snapchat stock? That probably weighs very heavily on her decision whether to stay with him. No, but she... Probably, but the thing is, once she divorced and got it, right? So I, I think she effectively, like, bid. so she, so her basis I, I think she's in terms divorced. of, in terms they, of, I could be wrong. In terms of like what is half hers, it's probably like snap at pre IPO valuation, it goes to him. And then between pre IPO and where she filed for divorce goes, you know, half of that goes to her. And then she's no longer a company insider. And so she can slam the bid and it doesn't matter. What if Snap's now down here? Does she owe him half of the difference? (laughs) I don't think so. She can't afford. Time to get on that plane to China and go see (laughs) Joe Lowe. That would be such a miserable existence. Like the only reason you stay together is because you can't afford to divorce him because you got to sell back your necklace. The only thing you have left from Joe Lowe. Well, rumor has, so it's just a rumor, but rumor has it that um, Tom Brady and Giselle had some significant assets in FTX when it imploded. Huh. So, I mean, if, if that were imbalanced, right, if, if yeah. one of them had more than the other, yeah, you might have to see some payments there as they split up. Yeah, I, I don't watch American football because it's boring and it's actually not football because no one kicks it, but... Um... He's having a bad run of it, isn't he, Tom Brady? Like, yep. the team doesn't seem to be doing well. He's been kicked to the curb by Giselle because he's gone back to playing. And now he has this whole FTX thing and he's probably going to get sued or has been sued, right? Well, well both of them are being sued. And they yet, were both in yeah. the commercials. Yeah. And the Texas AG is investigating, uh, or Texas Securities Commission huh. is investigating them. And so are some other state uh, securities commissions. 
So it's just fun. Like yeah. it's just just seeing these guys like for whoring their names out, just seeing them get stuck with all this legal bullshit. You know, a little taste of the stuff we get mm. in our line of work. Um, yeah, you know, I, I got to admit, it's 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 kind of fun to sit back and watch. I still root for Tom Brady because makes me feel less over the hill whenever he's doing something well. How old is he? 40. He's 45. Mid 40s, yeah. Yeah, he's 45, so he's one year younger than I am. I love it. This guy's been working out now for about six months, and he's kind of like, yeah, you know, me and Tom Brady. I know. I'm, real. <laughs> I know. I'm fucking real. Oh, please. <laughs> Now you should have seen me throwing little league batting practice. Oh, man. here we go. Oh, and is this I'm when he came in the other it. week and he's <laughs> like, "Oh, my, my shoulder!" Like I, I threw swear like, to God. oh, me and this guy, we threw like you know. When he comes to the door, I'm like, "How did this guy get pitches. to the door? His fucking head is so Eight big." Eight of them were underarm. Unbelievable. <laughs> I know, dude. I was bringing it. <laughs> well, Stop. I gotta tell you, I I don't know where it was the other week. Um, I was like flicking through something and I saw like uh, like a softball thing. It's the funniest thing watching someone pitch a ball quickly underarm. It is like the weirdest. Were you watching uh, it, it, it like softball? flick through it. No, it like flick through on a clip or something. Look at your eyes light up when you see women's softball, and it's just Those like the girls. strangest. Like they kind of like wind it up, and then it just kind of like well, stops. Well, it's dead. what's called a windmill. Yeah, right? it's it's pretty funny. Oh, here we are. It's a title. Well, yeah. Nothing. No, no, you you are the. Expert uh, in women's softball. Not Why don't you pitching, tell no. But I, I know what you mean. You you want you want to do something Venezuela Hugo Chavez style, don't you? I do. I've been reading this book. Uh, things are never so bad they can't get worse, and uh, it's it's all about Venezuela. And my God, that place sounds fucking awful. Um, so I'm at a bit where well, they're like we're the US's Venezuela, closest like ally now. Where, where are you talking about? It's all shit. Like there's all no over. good part of okay. Venezuela. I mean, Caracas is least shit, then you further you go, and then there's like slums, more shit, then there's countryside that sounds slightly least shit, but it, it genuinely, it just sounds horrific. Okay. So I'll, I'll quickly tell of any story then, yeah. because just to illustrate how shitty it is. And this is before it got really shitty. I was talking um, 2007 to a guy who worked at UBS, and... He was telling me that he had recently gone to Venezuela. So he's staying at, I don't know, the Marriott or something in Caracas, like one of the few functioning international standard hotels. And he was having a drink at the bar and there was a view to the lobby and the entrance to the hotel. And there was this coat rack right next to the entrance with a bunch of trench coats hanging on it. And so he asked the bartender at one point, so why do you guys have that rack of trench coats? And the bartender told him, just wait a little while, you'll see. At some point, some dude comes sprinting into the lobby of the hotel naked. A doorman grabs a trench coat off the rack, throws it on the guy, and escorts him to the elevator. No way. And so the guy, the, the UBS uh, guy, asked the bartender, what the fuck, what, what was that? And the guy said, "Oh yeah, he you know he's he must be a guest of ours who got robbed for his clothes." Holy shit! Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a good place That's to visit. Crazy. I highly recommend it. Wait, when did this happen? When did this? Happen? This was before the place really yeah, got fucked that's up. So we're talking when, like oh uh, five oh six. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's when things were good. Wow. So what Chavez used to do was uh, I think it was Channel Eight. Um, Channel Eight. Yeah, the he, Ocho. Yeah. <laughs> So he used to just kind of commandeer TV and he, well, at first he started this weekly thing where he'd like just go on and kind of be like, ah, shooting the shit like us, but right. slightly more consequential. Well, and also doing it the more regular cadence than we do. That's true. Um, which is amazing because I, I do think we are busier than him, despite the fact that he was running a country. And um, he would go on and he'd like, it, it started off like, moderately coherent and then it would just be like all right i'm having a bad day like fucking petro uh venezuela like you know they suck like all right i'm just firing everyone live on tv and like that is how you would find out that you were fired so he oh. he uh at one point fired like the you know entire board of uh like the national oil company just live on tv now we are replacing our uh, it vendor Yes. 
And so I know they've been the bane of your existence. Yes. And I actually think of you very much in the vein of the Hugo Chavez of, uh, of Muddy Waters. So I'm giving you the opportunity. What? I don't want to Speak to the people. I don't want to do Come on, that. speak into the camera on, and, and do it. Pull them. the trigger. Live on TV. They've, they've, been, they've been let go and they don't really care. Yeah, so do it it's a second a time. But yeah. you you didn't get the opportunity You're to tell. What am I, like Trump? No, yeah, no, yeah. I do can't it. If you were Trump do it better and that than was Trump. RIT, how would you do it? Come on. Do it better You're than fired. Trump. I don't know. Trump, I... Trump was never emotional when he yeah. did it. You should be emotional. They hurt you. They did. Somebody hurt fr- you. I've been frustrated with them for sure. And you guys have too. What, what, what is it? Why are you? Oh my whoa, God. Whoa, whoa, so look at the camera. Whoa. But you're fucking it, fired. Yeah. You're fucking fired. No. Very good. Um, no. Um, by the way, so we just got a new, this sort of has to do with IT. We just got a new kind of computer in the conference room. And Scott called me today, or I called him. He's like, wait, why did you do this? This is. They, Why um, did you spend my money without asking me? Yeah, pretty much. No, that's not what Scott asked you. This is what I'm asking you. Okay, well, two things. It was freezing for the last two months. And the woman today told me that it was, she said, look, this is from 2017. Not that it's terribly old, but 2017 is not going to up, like you constantly need to upload and blah, blah, blah. So that's why it's freezing, whatever, yada, yada, yada. So Scott told me our IT company gave us that last year. And I'm like, but it, they said it was <laughs> it was new. You know, like they put it in they, they and they fucking that that that, that came from so them. Nice. Yes. That Those is, mother, you know, I wasn't gonna I, say the name. Now I'm saying the name. Uh, now I'm pissed. Core intelligence. Core intelligence. Fuck you. Yeah. You sold us a 2017 piece of shit for like probably, you know, yeah. like, $3,000. But like, you know he's what? Like, you Do you know what that like, what? is? That is so like dealing with fucking China. Yes. Right? That is so like, ah, these people <laughs> don't understand. <laughs> what the hell? We out? can switch shit out on them. We that had this so, whole thing. But during, I bet, because no, they got taken over by private right. equity. They used to be good. I bet it was fucking yeah. like, He's like Chinese this was private part of the equity. Build out. He's like, did you not do <laughs> no, it? Dude, and I'm like, don't wait, need, what? You don't need private equity to be Chinese I to be private was, equity. <laughs> like these, no, they're just like, oh, well, you know, these guys. I said they did open they, it up like it was a brand new box and it was brand new. And <laughs> I said, they, 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 they like, went, they went wait to, a minute. They ordered a bunch of cardboard boxes from Dell <laughs> and the, you know, brand new boxes like of the, the 2021 model. They stuffed the 2017s <laughs> yeah, in there and like, delivered them to their retarded hedge fund like, clients. This and I'm like, he's telling me, he's like, Chris, he's like, you know what? I'm like, you want me to call them? What should I do? And he's like, Fuck it. Don't even worry about it. I, I'm just done with them. This is, he's like, I am telling you right now, it was there. It was supposed to be like brand new. I'm like, it's yeah, not. Of course it was. It wasn't yeah. supposed to be 2017. Even I, did I think get it was that. funny, like, you know, when um, Mark like pulled it out of the box and he's like, <laughs> like, like the dust like was going all over the place. They're all like this. It's, uh, it's the chip shortage. I'm like, huh. <sighs> yeah. But yeah, that's what happened. I didn't want to tell you, but wow. since we're doing our podcast and a, whatever, like that's just our fucking luck. That's why have, I'm like, you should tell me something like that. Yeah. Really? That's not our luck. That's our skill. Yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> no, they used to be good, but then, as we said, they were bought by private equity, and so remember when we did the fiduciaries it's the first all year? Back to we private had, we had, yeah. equity. We had an award for private equity called Private Equity: The World Is Not Fucked Enough Award because they can't buy something without just completely corpse fucking it, yeah. without turning into like it being a total necrophiliac orgy. So and so this know. is one <laughs> symptom no. of that. It's, well, so the necrophilia piece, yes. The orgy piece has progressed. There was an article in the Financial Times a few weeks ago and I, I was speaking to someone along a similar theme. It's really interesting. What private equity is now doing and of course, this is nothing like what happened with the financial nothing. crisis. Is oh, taking right. shitty bits of underlying private equity uh, funds and shitty bits of underlying like private equity, like the equity in the companies, taking all that, packaging the whole thing together and turning it into securities. Yep. So 
If you're not happy with the gazillion dollars of private equity underlying exposure that you're invested in, or you're not happy with owning BDCs or other secondary ways to play private equity, you now have illiquid dog shit wrapped in cat shit bought to you by private equity. What a fucking mess. And, and it's just, and this is just another kick in the fucking dick, right? Mm -hmm. Because I remember when we were, so when we were in California, and the relationship bank that we had for our firm and you know, most of us, mm -hmm. our accounts, I went to them one time and I said, look, I have these holdings in these hedge funds that are you know, like Muddy Waters hedge funds, a few other hedge funds. Is there some way that I could borrow against them? Can I get leverage on them? And I'm like, look, I'll over collateralize two to one, three to one, four to one, you tell me. And they're like, ah, no, we don't do that. You know, uh, that's that's really complex. We wouldn't know how to analyze that. And look, you get monthly liquidity in these funds, right? So the most they would have to wait is like 59 days to get a redemption, get monthly NAVs. The underlyings are liquid, unlike private equity. And so I walked away from that phone call being like, okay, you know, I guess it is complex. You know, they can't handle it. A friend of mine works in New York, uh, branch or New York office had dinner with her and I start telling her this and she's like, huh, that's weird because we make loans to the private equity guys all the time against their stakes. Mm. And I was, I was just fucking flabbergasted, like illiquid underlying, you know, good luck redeeming. I mean, cause a lot of these things are still subject to capital calls. Yeah. And yeah, I'm just, I'm so sick and fucking tired of private equity. Like why? You know, like, and so now they're taking those dog shit fund stakes, like you said, chopping them up and making them even shittier and getting leverage on that. Mm. It's just, it's like, how do these motherfuckers get away with it? They are so brazen. And, you know, like, I, I'm just, I'm just amazed constantly by, by the yeah. shit these guys are able to get away with. 2017 I'm Dell. I'm so fucking envious. <laughs> yeah, like, but... I'm I so worked at a private nervous. equity before I started. I, I was just temping for a month. Yeah. How many Seattle deals Francisco. did you bring in at that time? I didn't bring any deals. I was she did the core intelligence deal. CEO, but <laughs> but um, I was like, this compared to here, I mean, it was so cushy. It was so cushy. That's a good compared to here. A, yeah. I like that. No, yeah. I'm serious. It was so. I Such mean, this cushy, is the only like, fucking thing that's cushy about here. This one cushion, no, like that's the so like cushy everything thing. There, like many, everything was pit, how, like I was how like, how many, places. how many search warrants were executed during that time? I didn't see any search warrants. Huh. What percentage of the okay, surfaces were not marble in the office? Like, was anything not marble or at least everything gold leaf? Everything was you marble. Wouldn't, you wouldn't have a marble toilet seat though, because that'd be a little heavy. Like that there, would no slam. No one and, served anything and like that. I mean, yeah. I mean. I don't know. It was it was really it's kind of nice. <laughs> I have to tell you, dude. This is see. This is where you don't get private equity. You wouldn't be putting the toilet seat down yourself. You'd have an analyst do that. Okay. There's no way that mm. if you run a successful private equity firm, you have to deal with the minutiae. That's right. Remember, and if like, he cracks the marble seat, like the kitchen, he's fired. like was back, so stuck. Back to the cell side you go. <laughs> um, and then like you never had to pay. Well, hang for on. If our kitchen isn't stock, there's somebody who's responsible for for that. No, I mean, stopped not? with, I mean, Dude, it was different. like going to it's Whole Foods. It's totally different. Like, it we was have, like going to Whole Foods yeah. and like you had your pick of like, what kind of snack do you want? Do you want something savory? Like all this like yeah. different. Like, I mean, I will pony up for that. Oh, okay. A savory oh, and a We're not sweet doing snack. that good, buddy. Come on. <laughs> we're, we're lucky <laughs> if like we've got fresh milk. <laughs> I'm like, eh, this is fine yeah, for our it's guests. The it's the 29th of November. It's a little 21. Lumpy, yeah, it's good enough. It's okay. Does milk freeze? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does but suck being nice. I didn't have as much fun. No? No. I mean, you're only there for a month. I was only there for a yeah. month. To be fair. They tried to hire me, but I started for you yeah. already. I mean, in the first oh, month. Oh, really? We we hired you away from private equity? Oh, you didn't know that. Yes. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's pretty fucking baller. I don't know if they hired away. That, but that like, was revenge because <laughs> hired away a guy from us. That's true. God. Oh man, if he'd have been on the day, here on the day where we got visits, well, I think his head would have exploded. I think I actually would have literally saw that guy shit on the floor. 
No. <laughs> yeah, I think that was a possibility. Yeah, um, yeah. Courage was was definitely not not his a strong thing. suit no. there. Um, speaking of, of the sell side, they have mm-hmm. been very sneaky over the past week and a half in respect to um, D local. Oh yeah, back on those those turds. Yes, D local. Yeah, take it away. All right. So this is this is a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Today this is the, what, the 29th or? The 30th, I believe. Yeah, it's the 30th. Oh, all, shit. All the shit we're short is going up. Oh, so shit. Got to put, re- <laughs> put some redemption notices in today. <laughs> as soon as we're done. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, it's the, the 29th, but we we issued our report um, on the 16th of November, and they have not put out a written response other than the standard placeholder response in the aftermath. So the stock closed down 50% that day and they put out their little placeholder. And so they haven't issued a written response. We said, hey, we we believe these guys are a fraud and we suspect that they used client money to pay themselves uh, the pre-IPO shareholders a special dividend, which is kind of a big deal, I imagine, for a payments company. but what they have been doing is they've been holding clandestine phone calls with through investment banks and uh, and big hedge fund clients of the investment banks. So tomorrow is the is the fourth that we're aware of. So the first we we heard of was Morgan Stanley, mm-hmm. then J.P. Morgan, City. City. Tomorrow is Goldman. It's kind of funny, Goldman. Goldman kind Maybe of lasted it's the trough. Second, I don't know if it's Goldman's second call actually. Oh, it, oh, really? Maybe. No, I don't think. I mean, but I mean, it, needless to say, we didn't get invited to the first one. <laughs> well, we prime with one of those firms yes, and we pay them a true. few million dollars a year. And evidently that's not enough to get invited. So, you know, that that hurts. Yeah. Um, somebody's going to get a Christmas gift out of that, I think. Hell um, yes. Which we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, but yeah, anyway. You might so, be one of the lucky ones. <laughs> So the sell side, you know, like before we published on it, I was actually thinking this one might be a little bit different because could for several quarters, when you read the conference call transcripts for D-Local, see the sell side actually asking some maybe skeptical questions. Mm. It's just like, well, you know, the your markets seem to be going down and your competitors are are doing poorly, but everything's great for you and getting better. Like, how is that? And of course, there was never substantive answer. So I was thinking, okay, maybe this will be a little different. You know, since these guys seem to be pointing out the contradictions between reality and de-local, um, maybe they won't be so quick to basically, you know, jump on the company's dick immediately after publication. And um, no, sell side's going to sell side, man. And Reading not essential. <laughs> well, re- reading is quite frankly an impediment to you know being good on the sell side. Uh, thoughts an impediment. Reading reading can be helpful. Yeah, I think, reading's overrated. No, I think listening, just listening and regurgitating. So you don't have to read, but you have to be able to. You're basically like a stenographer in yes. many That's cases. How I've made it, and here I am. What the fuck do you stenograph? <laughs> well, I used to, not now. Yeah. Anywho, what else we got? Well, we talked about Christmas gifts. It, look, it is the most yeah. wonderful time of year. There are a few yeah. reasons why. I get so number, excited. Number one, we're close to audit season. So if you put something out there on a company, yeah. you know, now as they approach their audit or right when audits start, they have a, it's, if that company is a fraud, they have a significantly lower chance of getting away with it. So they have less time to sweep shit under the rug. Um, so that's one reason it's the most wonderful time of year. Time. The next is I get to wear my Arch Egos hoodie. Oh, God. I'm happy. But you have to be Don't. careful in which day you wear that in, in Texas because, like, no joke, the temperature here fluctuates by like 25 degrees every day. So yesterday Celsius. was, yeah, <laughs> yesterday was like, I don't know, 75. Today it actually was 80. It was today 80, is, yeah. Today is a high of like what? 51. Yeah, yeah, today today was cold. But anyway, I get to wear my Arch Egos hoodie today. So that's that's always a plus. True. Um, but we get to send out our gifts. And mm-hmm. we're, we started working on our gift list. I'm really excited this year. So should we talk about some of the past gifts? Well, yeah. the tradition started 
um, back in... 2016? No, no. no. Oh, 14? even before? Pre-me? Pre Pre-me? Amazingly. Yeah, stuff happened no. before. You. What? Yeah. yeah. Before you were down on hands and knees spray, paint, spray painting dildos the color gold. That's Actually, no, um, that, was, that was me. I did the spray painting. Oh. Wait, yeah. I was involved too. You, you just, ordered them. You just stood there like eyes wide I open. I ordered hold. them. You ordered I, them. That's true. And you actually got a discount because you um, I ordered put from them a all out in that. It was really strange how those ones were cheaper. That was fascinating to me. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, what was really funny about that is if you're spray painting plastic, oh, you have to put hard. primer on yeah. first. Well, that because was one of the problems with the fiducies, the trophy. Right, it was right. really hard to get those yeah. bronze. Fucking amateurs didn't know how to spray paint the thing. So at the time we were in, it was a class A office in San Francisco. And so like the prime, I mean, that stuff is super toxic and stunk. And I mean, my preference would have been, been to just put it next to someone I didn't like's desk, but Our they weren't in that neighbors. day. So, so yeah, so I put it outside and Poor it's about- you know, Out in the hallway, right. not outside. Right, because it, it would have been stolen in San Francisco for sure. No, yeah. Um, so I put it out in the hallway and uh, one of our neighbors came past and was like, uh, someone's left like nine like little kind of like dildos in your, I'm like, oh, they're mine. She's like, what, what do you do? Like, what's well, you, going on? You must be much bigger than you appear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's kind of like, well, what the hell is going on out there? I'm like, if you think that's bad, you should see what's going on in here. This is pretty fucked up. So, um, yeah, so we, we sent those out to all of the Asanko analysts, bar one analyst who actually didn't stick his head up his ass and realize that the thing was a complete fraud. And uh, I called him. I was like, hey, man, just want to say that, like, you know, next time you're at one of those mining conferences, you should ask some of your competition if they received um, phallic um, Christmas gifts, because those were from us. Gold dildo. So yeah. so the, the view that the whole point of the sell side is to ride dick is mm. not a new view. Like, we've no. had this for quite some time. Um, so, yeah, but the first one was to Jim Oberweiss Jr. Um, so Jim Oberweiss Jr., so you you haven't heard the story? No. Seriously? I don't know the story now. Okay, so Jim Oberweiss Jr. I think he his firm is based at, it's based in like suburban Illinois, um, kind of far from China, and um, his father actually had previously run the firm Oberweiss Asset Management. Um, they also own Oberweiss Dairy, so that's how they made the money. And then huh. you know oh, I'm so so good at like you know milking cows. I think I can <laughs> you know manage money. <laughs> at least clearly. Back then. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when you at least back then when you went to Oberweiss Asset Management's website, it's just like everybody's a CFA and they're trumpeting that. So automatically, you know, they're incompetent as fuck. Like if that's what you, you know, if that's like your your big claim to like why you should why you have skill, you know, that's not nah, that you're fucked. So anyway, um, Oberweiss was long NQ Mobile. And in November of October, yeah, end of October 2013, we came out like NQ Mobile is a near total fraud. Stock was down 60% day one, even more than DLO, down 9% the second day. Then they started yoking it back up. Well, Oberweiss <clears throat> wrote in his December newsletter, because actually he, he has a paid is a newsletter for paid subscribers. Like they're actually people who pay you know, a couple thousand dollars a year for this piece oh of God. shit. I mean, you know, I don't know. They're, you know, there's something in the milk or something that they drink. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, he, uh, he, in that he calls us manipulators. He said, I know that Carson Block and Muddy Waters have a reputation for finding some frauds like Sinoforce, but on this one, they're absolutely making it up. They're manipulating the stock. You know, we got on a plane to Beijing as soon as we read this and we met with the company and <laughs> just like a bunch of white people <laughs> from fucking rural Illinois show up in Beijing. Like, how are you guys going to figure this one out? Right? Like, uh, Chairman, whatever, you know, or uh, Chairman Lin, are you a fraud? <laughs> No. <laughs> Thank you very much. I must go. And so he doubled his position. He wrote in the oh newsletter. He's like, yeah, we backed the truck up. So one year later, 
stocks close to zero. <laughs> and, you know, and so anyway, uh, we pinged Bloomberg because we noticed that Oberweiss had, had finally started selling out of its position, like taking huge loss, right? So this is in 2014. So this, this, yep. is, now, like, oh, this is now December, early December 2014, I think that we noticed this. And, um, and a few days later, um, NQ Mobile was going to have its first conference call that they'd had in three quarters. Basically, because they, they, they like their auditor wouldn't issue wouldn't wouldn't issue an audit opinion, so they fired their auditor and went with like you know an auditor of last resort. It's actually run by like a nice guy, so I won't say the name, but you know yeah. they, that's their business is right. you know issuing unqualified <laughs> opinions to you know, to like frauds. But um, so anyway, um, so we we noticed this and we we ping a reporter at Bloomberg and tell him like, hey, you know. Uh, this guy with all this conviction here, you know, accusing us of manipulating who backed the truck up when this thing got cut in half. Um, yeah, he just blew out. So, so the reporter calls up Oberweiss, you know, and this is an opportunity for the guy to be like maybe a little bit reflective, slightly ecumenical. And no, yeah. he accuses <laughs> he accuses us of destroying the company <laughs> with our short reports and says, yeah, even though you know you're right, sometimes you just can't be that patient. And by the way, we didn't lose any money. No way. <laughs> yeah, all fucking lies. So anyway, like, all right, this, this this motherfucker deserves. So we're like, you know, it's almost Christmas. We got to give this guy a present. And um, so, I mean, of course, we're initially thinking, you know, something about like a, a large phallus in an anus. And, you know, we're kind of looking for like a sex doll. Like, could we find a sex doll? And is there like an L-shaped box that we could send it in so that it's already bent over by the time it gets there? No, there isn't. And the sex doll thing was kind of hard at, on short notice. But that's when we found these, um, they're, you know, they're kind of like, uh, you know, like high thighs to low torso sections of the male anatomy um, with, you know, a hole. Um, and they're called male masturbators, apparently. And like bought them on Amazon. I mean, the, the Amazon headline was great. It was like 15 pounds of jock ass. Yeah. So <laughs> I so always wonder whose job it is to write those product reviews because I'm sure no one's logging in. some people, it's not in. a job. It's fun. <laughs> it's, yeah. So, pipe, pipe Dream Supreme. That was it. The, oh, okay. uh, the brand. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. All right. That's, oh, whoa. Wow. Somebody's a repeat customer. <laughs> Clearly. Absolutely. <laughs> so we so we got that in a dildo and like thing arrived, jam it in the dildo in the ass and wrote Merry Xmas from Henry and Omar, who were the co-CEOs, you know, and that's definitely in air quotes, um, and sent it to Oberweiss. And so we sent it two day FedEx. Um, and that was expensive. That was like two hundred dollars. Now, I wanted this to end up under the family Christmas tree. So I'm thinking you know, how would I do that? But see, Jim Oberweiss soon, Sr. had recently run for uh, uh, U.S. Senate. And so I'm thinking, all right, let me look for people who donated the maximum to his campaign who live you in the same town the as they're located. I'm thinking these are probably family friends. So I put that as the sender, you know, that I, I like took one of those family names, you know, so it's right. from so-and-so. So, you know, hopefully... Don't you wish you had a name. freaking camera in that thing? Oh, I wish I did. Oh, that would have well, been so good. So you go over to FedEx, you know, for second day air. Yeah, it costs like $250. This thing's heavy, right? So sent it off. And that night was the, was the NQ mobile conference call. So I dial in, but I dial in on two phones. Because I, I want to ask about... So Henry Lin, you know, one of the co-CEOs, has disappeared apparently. So he's been disappeared. Uh, the, and the, the rumor on the street is that it's anti-corruption campaign related. It turns out to be even better than that, um, what ultimately came out. But um, so I want to I want to ask about that because that's not in the company's earnings release. And Henry Lin's not on the call. So I dial in as Carson Block from Muddy Waters. But with the other phone, I'm like Jim Oberweiss Jr. from Oberweiss Asset Management. So they finish the prepared portion. We're opening it up for calls. Press star, whatever. I do it on both phones. First question comes from Jim Oberweiss Jr. of Oberweiss Asset Management. <laughs> like, ah, uh, actually, this is Carson Block of Muddy Waters Capital. Um, want to ask where Henry Lin is. Is it true that he's been like, <laughs> click? <laughs> so, so anyway, 
The next morning, early, before FedEx delivery time, um, this is actually two days later, the, you know, after I shipped it, I get an email from Jim Mobilewise Jr. Subject, you're pretty funny. <laughs> Response, no. you have no idea how. <laughs> <laughs> no Absolutely. way. Why is this the first time so, ever hearing so I, I So I, I, I don't know what happened. Now, one of one of our guys had a great idea. He's like, you know, it's too bad you couldn't have done this. Like, but next time around, which we never did, we could work on this for next year. If we send something like that, have it encased in Lucite, right? And then just put the FedEx shipping label on the Lucite, you know, with no box. <laughs> so our, our, our friend's rationale was, so everybody who handles this package along the line is going to be like, huh, Jesus, Jim Oberweiss Jr. The fuck did this guy do? That's awesome. Yeah. So anyway, that's how the, the great, the grand tradition of, of giving and muddy water started. I mean, we could have a whole, like, yeah, another podcast. Yeah, we've done some good stuff over the years. I've uh, done some good stuff. A, I bet a you brain. Um, we gave a brain. We're giving a brain again this year. I mean, yeah. unfortunately, like, yeah, I got to repeat, but. Yeah. And on that note. Anyway. Yes. Let's end on that note. I think we're over time. You got an outro us, Crystal? No, that's all you. Okay. Well, no, but you don't have to. Board. It's not on. Yeah. You yeah. don't have to read anything. You can do the outro. Come on, Crystal. Till next time. I don't know. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I think, will we have a holiday special yeah. before before oh, this, yes. this wraps? I actually really would like one. Let's have a holiday okay. special. Maybe with some of the gifts. Yeah. Or, yeah, post. I mean, I, don't, I mean, the gifts should have been shipped out by then. Most of them. Sure. There's a certain bus shelter near a certain university's law school that probably not be rented until January mm-hmm. at best. But, uh. But yeah, that's I'm not going to stay gonna, I'm not, tuned. I'm, that's right. Stay tuned. Stay tuned, kids. Cool. Anyway, signing off. God, that's so anticlimactic. Do better. I know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Oh, why are they? Because it's it's on you. You have the ball. Take I the know, shot. I can't do it. Take I can't the do shot. It. You do it. Go. It's on you, Krista. I'm not going to. Signing off till next time. Zero fucks given. Cheers. Cheers.